David, I'm relying on you to look after the house today. If things finish up early, I'll be back home in three days. Don't worry, Linda. I've got everything in check. I know you're concerned about your dad being in the hospital, so take your time and don't stress about us. Thank you. I've restocked the fridge and freezer, but if you don't have time to cook, consider taking Lily out for a meal. Got it. That'll make things a lot easier. Great, I've got to go. They're starting to board the plane. Take care. Send my regards to your parents. Linda, what's up? My son told me you were heading to your parents' place today. Yeah, my dad's condition got worse and he had to be hospitalized. I'm worried about leaving my mom alone, so I decided to be with her. I heard you'll be gone for three days. I thought I'd take it easy while I'm there. You should have given me a heads up. Imagine the feeling when you suddenly abandon Lily. Hold on, what are you talking about? I just got a call from David saying you were going to your parents' place and needed someone to look after Lily. What's going on here? As our daughter-in-law, you should have planned this better. I asked David, and he mentioned that you might have forgotten to tell us. You must be joking. I understand you were excited about visiting, but please be more responsible. Wait a minute, is Lily okay? David told me he'd take care of her, so I don't understand what's happening. This is just unbelievable. He told me not to worry because he had everything under control. I didn't intend to ask you for help. Consider this, Linda. David has been working those long hours with all the overtime. It's just not feasible for him to take care of a first grader like Lily. But he assured me he could leave work on time and look after our daughter. Look, I understand you may not want to rely on your in-laws too much, but in situations like this, don't hesitate to ask for help. I'm pretty sure David knew how you'd feel and kindly offered to handle it himself. That's the type of nice guy he is. Are you serious? I'm not sure we're talking about the same person. If you think about it, it does make sense, doesn't it? My son was buried in work and couldn't take care of the children. But he insisted he could handle it. That's enough of this. I'm on my way to pick up Lily now. And until you return, we'll take care of her. Will that be all right? Yes, I'm sorry for causing you any trouble. Thank you very much. No problem at all. I had plans to visit the city anyway. I'm sorry. As long as you understand, please pass on my regards to your parents as well. What's happening here, David? You promised you'd take care of Lily yourself. I just got a text from your mom and she criticized me, saying I should just rely on her. I'm sorry, but there was an unexpected work situation and I had to put in some overtime to sort it out, so I called her. You should have explained that to her. It felt like you were making it my fault for not contacting her, didn't it? Look, I already feel bad about this. I thought I could handle looking after our daughter alone, but I was too embarrassed to admit that I couldn't, so... All this just to save face. When I return, you're going to clarify everything with your mom in front of me, right? Got it. I'm really sorry. So, in the end, it'll be your parents taking care of she, right? I guess I'll need to buy some gifts to appease them. Okay, I'll pay you back later. If possible, grab some local craft beer for me. I'll see what I can do. Take care, work hard, and look after Lily, all right? Okay, I got it. Hurry up and pick up the phone. What's taking you so long? I'm sorry, I'm currently at the hospital. They don't allow phones here. What's going on? There's a fire. Wait, what? A fire, something's on fire. Flood a nearby house, that's really alarming. I hope everyone is safe. What are you saying? Your house is on fire. Are you serious? Yes, your house is engulfed in flames. Why is our house on fire? I saw a bunch of fire trucks rushing past my place and there was smoke in the distance. It was in the direction of your house. So I went to check it out and I couldn't believe it, but your house is on fire. Where are you right now? Oh my God, what's happening? Are you there right now? I got as close as I could before the fire department blocked me. It's unbelievable. Okay, but do you know what caused it? I tried to ask, but they wouldn't tell me anything. I'm so sorry this happened. Have you checked on Lily? She wasn't in the house, was she? Is Lily okay? Is she hurt? Luckily, she managed to get out before the fire became too serious. So, yes, she's okay, and with me now. Thank goodness she's all right. But now is not the time to relax. Have you heard from David? I've been trying to call him, but he's not picking up. Oh dear, I haven't tried reaching out to him. Lily said she was alone, so maybe he wasn't home. But I'm still worried. Where could he be? Let's try not to panic. 
David mentioned he might have to work overtime because there was some trouble that came up. Work? What are you talking about? What do you mean? Since I couldn't reach him, I called his office first. They told me he took a paid vacation day and wasn't in. What? A paid vacation? You have no idea where else he could be? His house is on fire and my son is missing. I've been in tears just thinking about what might have happened. Martha, please try to stay calm. I'll call David immediately. In the meantime, please take care of Lily. I'll do that. I'm pretty sure he told me he'd be at work. Maybe there was some miscommunication with the person who took your call. You could be right. That's a possibility. He's definitely safe, so please try to relax until I can get hold of him. You need to call me back right now. Something terrible has happened. What's wrong? I already told you I'm dealing with a work issue. I'm quite busy at the moment. Your calls have been really annoying. I'm just relieved you're safe. What are you talking about? David, where are you now? What do you mean, where? I just told that I have to work overtime, didn't I? But your colleague told me you didn't come to the office today and took a few days off. That can't be right. Where are you? Where do you work while on vacation? I didn't know you were such a workaholic to work even on your days off. Well, um... If you're not at the office, you should be able to answer my call, right? Explain this to me over the phone. Uh, well, you see, I can't talk on the phone because the signal here is really bad. Bad signal? Where exactly are you? The subway. Look, I just arrived home. I got off at the station. You must be joking. The subway? What are you talking about? What do you mean? It's late, and I need to get dinner started, then give her a bath. I'm quite busy right now, so I'll talk to you tomorrow. You're cooking dinner and giving her a bath? Are you really at home? Of course, where else would I be? The home you claim to be in is currently on fire. What's going on? So what exactly were you planning to do while our house was on fire? Cook dinner for our daughter and give her a bath? You're really something, carrying on with your routine amidst a fire. House on fire? What are you talking about? No, what are you talking about? The house is on fire and Lily is with Martha. In the midst of all this chaos, where were you, her father? Well... Come on, explain it to me calmly. What are you doing with those vacation days? Where are you? Well, I, uh, naturally I decided to take paid leave, you know? Wow, so you can just spontaneously take vacation days? How nice, and it took so much coaxing to get you to take a day off for your daughter's career day. Well, that was just a busy time. So where are you now? You said you were on the subway, right? I was actually at the convenience store. Then you should be able to come home soon, right? Come home immediately. I just got back from my flight and will be home soon. Well, it's not that simple, you see. What now? It only takes about five minutes for you to return from the store. Your parents live nearby. You can go there if you want. Hear me out. I know I said the corner store, but what if I told you it was in the next state over? Excuse me? I'll be back tomorrow. Sorry, my battery's dying. I have to go. What the hell are you talking about? I just can't return right now, okay? I will leave Lily in the care of you and my mother. Linda, what's been happening? Did you manage to contact my son? Yes, I did get a response, sort of. That's a relief. I'm so glad he's safe. So, where is he? He'll definitely leave the office immediately given the situation, right? Well, he appears to be at a convenience store in the neighboring state. He... what? What does that mean? It means he won't be able to return until tomorrow. He's turned off his phone, so no one can reach him now. What do you mean, the neighboring state? He was at work, wasn't he? That's what I want to believe, but is that really the truth? What are you implying? That my son was skipping work and doing something else? Maybe he received an urgent call to visit a client out of state. You know, he had some business with the spa resort, right? A spa resort? After giving it some thought, I realized I have a GPS tracker on my phone. A friend recommended it because you never know when dementia might strike at our age. Oh, I do recall you mentioning that. So I asked David to set it up for me, and for practice, I put his phone's GPS info in. Really? I was planning to switch it back to my information, but forgot how to do it. So David's GPS info is still active. So that's how you found out he's at a spa resort in a different state? Exactly. David's company handles some marketing work, so it's probably related to that. Would it happen to be Hallmark Resort and Spa? You guessed it. I recall seeing a brochure for that on the coffee table. I thought he was planning a family vacation or something. Or something? Are you insinuating that my son is cheating on you? I haven't used that word yet, but it's interesting that you immediately went there. Could it be that you're the one who suspects he's being unfaithful? 
that's impossible. What kind of parent doesn't trust their own child? That's a wonderful quote for a throw pillow. But what do you really think? I'll be there sometime in the middle of the night. Sorry for the inconvenience, but please take care of our daughter until then. Of course, no problem. I added a little extra to your dinner, so feel free to have it when you get here. Thank you very much. I'll see you shortly. Hey, Linda, how much do you think our fire insurance will cover? Seriously? That's the first thing you say to me? I just went to the fire site, and everything is soaked from the firefighters. It's a total loss, and we'll have to rebuild the whole thing. So I'm curious about the insurance payout. I hope it's enough to build one of those new smart homes. Really? Is that what's on your mind right now? Why are you so casual about this situation? Well, given the circumstances, money matters right now, so I'm just thinking, practically. You're unbelievable. I'm sorry about yesterday. I got a sudden call from a client in the neighboring state and couldn't get away. I'm really sorry I worried you so much. Is that the story you're going with? So let's use this experience to come together as a family and appreciate what we have. We'll start by rebuilding our home. I know you have doubts, but I promise this family means everything to me. This family means everything to me. Spare me, I want a divorce. The game is up, you cheating scumbag. What are you talking about? Thanks to your mom's GPS app, we know exactly where you went. Even if you turn off your phone, we have a record up until that point. Looks like you had quite the time at the Hallmark Resort and Spa last night. You tracked me? Early this morning, I went to see the remains of our house, including the man cave you never let me enter. The fire left it wide open. You went inside? I told you not to. Of course I had a look around. Now I have a mountain of evidence that you cheated on me. Oh my god. I couldn't care less about the fire insurance money. Be prepared for significant alimony and child support payments. You've got to be kidding me. Linda, this is all a huge misunderstanding. I was just playing around. None of it was serious. I don't want to hear any excuses. David, you put your daughter's life at risk. You left a first grader home alone to go on a spa vacation with someone else. Do you realize what you've done? Look, I'm sorry, and I deeply regret my actions, but I thought she'd be fine for one night because she's already in first grade. You left some easy-to-heat frozen meals, so I thought she'd be okay. Lily tried to microwave one of those frozen meals, just like she's seen me do countless times. But instead of using plastic wrap, she used aluminum foil. Oh no! An adult would understand the problem with that. But Lily is just a child. They understand a lot, but not everything. You left her alone in the house. I'm truly sorry. Let me try to make things right. If apologies were enough, there'd be no need for the police. You're going to be held responsible for all of this. I can't believe you came back as if nothing happened. After the divorce, you won't have any contact with your daughter. What? That's not fair. That is the least of your worries, you worthless person. I have the divorce papers with me now. Come to your parents' house. You'll sign them in front of your parents. After I gathered a lot of evidence of David's infidelity, he couldn't deny it. He knelt down, crying, begging for my forgiveness. But how could I forgive a betrayer and deceiver like him over the past period? Subsequently, we got divorced. The rumor of his infidelity caused the fire to spread throughout the neighborhood, leading to him being shunned by family and neighbors. He and his lover were both fired shortly after. Now he has to dig into his own pocket to clean up the mess caused by the fire and pay child support to me. I guess in the years to come, he'll have to live in disgrace, poverty, and infamy.